this factor here takes into account the dependence of the rate of the reaction on the orientation of the colliding molecules. Yes? So the orientation, is that like correlated with like all the bonding we did previously, or is that something completely I mean, it, it is, it is, but not in a very direct way, okay? Um, it's a very complex subject. This is one of the areas that I spent my graduate studies um, studying. I was looking at how molecules collide with surfaces, and I was varying the angle at which these molecules collided with the surface, and looking at reaction probabilities. Very complex phenomena, but a very simple fudge factor called the steric factor. Okay? So here's our final answer. Okay? A lot of hand waving, a lot of assumptions, but then we can compare it to this equation here, which we have been using for the last three lectures. And now we can get an expression for the rate constant by making this comparison here. The rate constant has this form. This is our theoretical derivation of the rate constant. Here is our experimental expression for the rate constant that Arrhenius found in 1890. And you can see there is a lot of similarity between the two. And so we have justified, with a lot of hand waving, why the Arrhenius expression looks the way it does. So we can say that A here is actually C times P. It's not quite true, but it's OK. OK? As you go to chemistry is like an onion. OK? You peel off layers and layers and layers, and you will finally come to nirvana at the very end. Have you reached Nirvana? No way. No way. No way. I'm sorry? All right. Um, there is more detail. There's quite a bit more detail in my notes. But what I expect you to know is what I talked about in class today. Okay, a lot of the material in the notes is going to be optional. Okay? Okay, so we've talked about the rate constant. Let's finish up. I'm going to take a couple of minutes more today than usual. Um, I want to show you these three movies. Or should I just paint? Um, why, don't, why don't we, we stop here? All right, I'll come back and talk about uh, catalysis in class on Thursday, which is tomorrow. Uh, yes, you should submit a one-minute paper. Uh, I will have the lecture posted by about 1 o'clock today. Are we having a new lecture tomorrow? Yeah, um, okay, so the lecture tomorrow. Okay, here's the deal. I'm going to have a lecture tomorrow, but that material will not be on the final exam. Yes. Okay, but I'm going to give you an optional quiz on that material so that you get to drop two quizzes instead of one. Okay? All right, so material on the lecture tomorrow is not going to be on the exam, but it's really important material for organic chemistry. So please, please make sure that you read the, uh, the lecture and submit, a, you have to submit a one, pa one minute paper and then there'll be an optional quiz on that material. Yes? Um, when will the actual 50 and is that separate from the quiz that we have now?
That, that's going to be separate and it will be a take home optional quiz. Yes? Okay. Um, is that what you're talking about? Um, you know how you said that you're going to have to learn about international language? Right. Yeah. Okay. Spanish. I couldn't be able to find anything. I'm so overwhelmed right now. Yeah. The quiz tomorrow is lecture 23 and 24, right? And today's, and today's lecture. right now for another uh, group of students. Um, it's, I think, just a matter of putting it into the calculator. Mm, I feel like I've done it right. Mm, keep getting like 1,087. OK. Um, could you maybe um, c come find me later? Yeah, what, okay. um, what time is convenient for you? All right. Um,
Yes, I did. Okay. Um, I'll do it again. I'm okay. sorry. The first time I usually put it, I like, do the general, like, all the way the bottom. Oh, because I can't see that. Yeah. yeah. And that was pretty dumb on my part. Sorry. But then I thought I put it in the list. But I'll look at you. You can email it. Okay. <laughs> that, that would guarantee it. Yeah. chapter 21, 22, and 23 and circle every time a different name of a type of chromatography showed up, you'd be in excess of 15 probably. And there certainly are far more uh, kinds than that um, to worry about. I did mention that we had um, what you were doing in lab of uh, paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography. This is a thin layer chromatogram, and it actually illustrates a couple of things. One is that if you're going to do something like thin layer chromatography and try to make a judgment about what the substance is, you have to have some reference. In fact, every one of those little chromatography plates that you use is going to have slightly different characteristics. So even if you knew that cocaine went this far in a certain amount of time on plate number one, you'd still have to use cocaine as 
a reference on plate number two. So in this case, what they did was dose their plate with known amounts of three illegal narcotics and then ran an unknown from a drug seizure case and sure enough the unknown had everything. It's uh, not clear to me what one sells on the street calls everything. But anyway, that's what was found in that particular case. And you notice that what you're relying on <clears throat> is these things moving the same distance. And you might even want to argue, particularly if you were a defense attorney, you might want to argue that heroin is not the same as what was found in the sample. So one of the things that made this thin layer chromatography uh, somewhat uh, less than totally useful, particularly in forensic chemistry, was the fact that you could not necessarily rely uh, expect these things to show up at precisely to the nearest tenth of a millimeter or whatever you wanted to use. Okay, but that was used for a long time until uh, everybody had ready access to either gas chromatography or liquid chromatography. Um, this gets us into the question of what you can use chromatography to do. Now, yesterday we played with a lot of sample chromatograms and talked about things like retention time and resolution and everything, but I never made any reference to this is the chromatogram of this particular kind of molecule. Okay, it was just generalization. Well, now we have to get particular and say what is it that we can do uh, with this. Um, so this was some of the stuff we went through yesterday and that was the wrong slide. Um, because that's what we're going to go through in a second. But we had gone through all of these businesses of how we would try to do a chromatogram and then we have to Say, what can we use it for? So we want to do both qualitative analysis, where we try to figure out what the molecule is, and quantitative analysis, where we try to figure out how much of that molecule is present <coughs> in our, our sample. So one of the issues with qualitative analysis is the major thing you pull off your chromatogram is the retention time. And the problem is that retention times don't contain any molecular information. So TR is going to depend on many, many things, okay? And I'm going to use language today that mixes whether your sample was going through a gas chromatograph or a liquid chromatograph. You either have a solvent or you have a carrier gas that carries your sample through the <coughs> cup. So, TR is going to depend on the molecule, that's true. But it's also going to depend on the solvent. It's going to depend on the stationary state. And it almost feels as if it depends on anything that can possibly happen in the world. Uh, that everything will seem to influence the retention time. But these are going to be the major factors. The stationary phase. Yes, right. It's the stationary phase, how this inter 